Welcome to session 14 of Shepherding to the Heart of Your Child. If you've made it this far, then I got great news for you. The rest of the book is practical information that you can apply what we have been talking about in the first 12 chapters. I admit the first 12 chapters were difficult at times with concepts and thoughts, but now we get down to the very practical. In this second section of the book, he's going to deal with three age groups, infancy to childhood, which is birth to about four or five, and then childhood from six to 12, and then teenage years from 12 through the teens. And in each section, he's going to deal with first the objectives for that age. What do you want to accomplish in the child's life for those ages? And then he's going to talk about the procedure, how to do that, for each age. Now today we're looking at the youngest, infancy to four or five years of age, and the objectives at this point come from Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Now remember, God has given you the parent the authority over that child. You are his representative in the life of that child. It is not a democracy. You are the authority. You are the lawmaker. God has made you the lawmaker. And you lay down the law, and then you bring about what's necessary, punishment, when the law is not followed. And so God has made it, I believe, fairly simple for parents of babies up all the way to four or five years of age. And the objective is simply this. Get them to obey your voice immediately with a joyful heart or with the right attitude. That's your job with these young children. Now that begins even when that young child is just beginning to get around in the walker. And they'll take that walker and they'll move it over to the curtains and they reach out and start pulling on that curtain. Now, at that point, you say no, and you give them a little pop on the hand. No, and then you take them back away from the curtains. And then they begin to go and reach again at the curtains. You say, I said no, and you give them a little pat on the hand, and again, pull them away. Now, many children, I remember particularly my girls, when we would do that, just a pop on the hand, would cry and act like you had just really done some hard discipline. Uh, but they would learn the lesson. Uh, but then when the boys came along, I remember they would go out and grab at the curtain and I'd pop the hand and I'd say no. And they'd look at me and they'd grab again. Now, they were a little more difficult. So a little more spike on the hand. And again, you're trying to just bring about that sensation that they learn what no means. And you again, some children will take more practice than others. Now, as they get older and they're learning to obey your voice, the important thing is to re show them that they are obeying God when they are obeying you because you're God's authority. Now, the verse goes on to say, or the verses in chapter 6, that honor your father and mother that your days may be long in the land. So God is equating in that Old Testament command prosperity in the land with their obedience and honoring of their parents. Now, why is that? First of all, because God has placed parents as a protection. There's an umbrella of protection that God uses the parents to place over that child because you are the authority, and when they obey you, they are in the, the place of protection. We all remember growing up and our parents telling us we couldn't go to a certain place or do a certain thing, and we just thought they didn't want us to have fun. But you know now that they were protecting you. And there is protection, both physical and spiritual, that comes from obeying the authorities in our lives. And that's true for children as well as for adults. When a wife is submissive to her husband, that canopy of protection is provided for her. When she is unsubmissive, she brings herself out from under that protection, and then she opens herself up for satanic attack, 
Same thing about the children. When they came out from under authority, they are opening themselves up for the attack of the enemy and for actually physical difficulties, perhaps even physical harm. And so it's important to explain to your children, if you're going to be in the circle of blessing, you've got to be under mom and dad's authority. You need to obey us. And as you obey us, you're in the place for God to bless you. And you're in the place of living in a quiet and peaceful way. And so it's important that we explain that to our children. And the objective, again, is to teach them to obey your voice. Because if they will not obey your voice, then they will not grow up to respect you. If they do not respect you, then they will not listen to your teaching, what you're going to be doing as they get older. And so the main thing your kids need to learn is they need to learn to obey your voice immediately and with the right attitude or with a joyful heart. Now, he talks about the appeal process. Now, this is, of course, when children get older. You wouldn't practice it with a two-year-old. But the appeal process is a safeguard if perhaps a parent has told a child to do something and we've not thought it through and there may be some, some information we're not aware of. And I believe the appeal process needs to be reserved for situations when there is information that the parent is not aware of that the child needs to bring to the situation. For instance, as he brought out, you go in and you say, hey kids, it's time to go to bed. Now, they're right in the middle of watching a program. They've been engrossed in it. Uh, it's almost finished, but you don't want to exasperate your kids. And may we appeal? What's the new information? We're just about finished with this program. Can we wait until the program is finished? Now, at that point, you can say yes and wait, or you can say no, I want you to go to bed now, and they have to, and need to obey. So when they've learned to obey your voice, though, you're not going through this struggle. But mama, but mama, you only appeal when there's new information that we're not aware of. And then when there's new information, you may, in the right attitude, which is an attitude of submission and willingness to obey whatever the decision is made by the parent, and then they may appeal. So again, a child must first learn first-time obedience, and we talked about that earlier, and we'll catch, touch again on this next week. But the child needs to learn your voice, and once they've learned to obey your voice, then they can move on to the appeal process. But that's the important thing, and to remember that they're coming under your protection. The circle of blessing is the place of obedience. Now, the best place for children to learn submission to authority is in the home, and that's God's original intent. When God placed in the home a father as his head of the home and a mother as his valuable helper, he said the mother is to submit to the leadership of the father, to the authority of the father. And when the father is a loving servant leader, and the children see mom submitting to the father, they are learning what it means to submit, and what it means to be a loving authority. The boys in the home are learning what it means to be a loving spiritual leader in the home as they see dad loving mom, and as they see mom submitting to dad, the girls are learning what it means to submit, and the boys are learning what it means to submit to the authorities in their life. We all have authorities in our life. And when the family observes dad submitting to church authorities, submitting to governmental authorities, submitting to his employer's authority, then they are seeing what it means to submit to authority. And so the scripture gives the place to learn this primarily in the home. And if your kids don't learn to obey you, their authority, they will not grow up to obey God and they will not obey other authorities in their lives. The prisons are filled with men who never had to obey their parents, never learned to obey their parents, and therefore they didn't obey other authorities in their lives, and they have broken the law because the law is an authority, and now they're having to pay the price. And so it's important for the well-being of your children, both physically and spiritually, that they learn to obey your voice. That's a simple thing. Now your assignment is to look, if you have kids in this age group, talk about, 
Now, are we teaching them to obey our voice? What are we doing right? What do we need to improve? What perhaps are we doing wrong? Are we bringing them to understand to submit to us is to submit to God. To obey us is to be in the place of blessing. To disobey is to bring themselves into danger. And it can literally save their lives. I remember when our kids were young and we had this pastor friend who was visiting with us and he had a child that was about six or seven years of age and we lived on a busy road. And the kids were out playing in the front yard and he and I were standing there talking. And as the picture comes, the kids were playing and, and the ball went out into the street and the seven-year-old boy was tearing off to get that ball and his dad saw a car coming. He just said, Todd, stop! And that boy stopped just like that. And he was safe. But what if his dad had not taught him to obey his voice immediately? That outcome could have been totally different. So you may be saving your child's life, literally, when you teach them to obey your voice immediately with a happy heart. And now, I know that's the, you say, well, that's a lot easier said than done. Correct, I'll agree. And we're going to talk about next week. How do you go about bringing this about? How? What are the procedures that we will use? Read his chapter. I didn't cover as much as I'd like to, but read the chapter, digest it, and then next week we'll talk about the procedures. All right, hope you have a good week, and God bless you.